Hi everybody, Lindsay Roberts here, Jesus and You series on this beautiful, terrific Tuesday. Thank you, Jesus, for the day the Lord has made. We're gonna rejoice, we're gonna be glad in it. It is one of those, oh, I'm on Facebook, there it is. There's my alarm to myself, I made it. Stand strong and don't back down. We're gonna talk about the Jesus and You series today in the book of Ephesians. I was reading something in Ephesians. Of course, our series the last couple of, couple of days has been about Ephesians. Ephesians is, he is the Christ of unsearchable riches. That's what the book we're working out of Jesus in every book in the Bible. And I am so excited to read this because this is something I read every, every, every day. So if you can hear me and you can see me, let me know. Tell me you can hear me. Tell me you can see me. Julie, hi there. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Thumbs up. Jesus and You series, and this one is perhaps one of my favorite things to do in the Bible. Hi, Barbara. So glad you're joining us today. Jesus and You series. Hi, Jill. Uh, praying for our family. Thank you, Jill. Dale, praying for you. Praise the Lord. Okay. Jesus and you series, unsearchable. He is the Christ of unsearchable riches. Now, many people think riches is just money. Um, someone said, pray for me. I'm not feeling well today. Whoever that was, send me your name back and I am praying for you. And Ruby and Gail and Ruby and praise the Lord for all of that. Thank you. Lydia, praying for you. Jill, you can hear me. Praise the Lord. Ruby, praise Jesus. Jill, uh, Julie, yes, blessing. Okay, here we go. So, this is about the book of Ephesians and the power of God working in us. Ephesians is a very interesting book. And if I wrote it down, um, let me put where I put, um, in the book of Ephesians, this is more about, in a sense, teaching us our role in the gospel. Many books prior to that was talking about, and of course it's all talking about Jesus, but books talking about the, the deity of Christ, um, about the power of Christ, about Christ in us, and all of that is correct. This particular one talks about, we talked yesterday, Ephesians 3.20, um, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above anything we ask or think, according to the power working in who? Not the power of God working in God. We already know that's there. Or working in Jesus. Already know that. His disciples. Okay. Oh, just preachers. Okay. Or non-preachers. Okay. No, this is about the power of God working in us. That sums up the book of Ephesians to me. Ephesians starts swinging into what is our part. How do we do what God has equipped us to do? How did God equip us? Equip us? Why did he, equip, did he equip us? And why did he want us to take that power? Hi, Ronnie, praying for you. Kathy, good, you can hear me. All right, so the answer to that in those questions, go to, if you have your notes, or if you've downloaded them, um, go to Ephesians 6. Yep, I'm here, I'm doing there. I always give myself a reminder. Those are my daughters, in case you didn't see that. I know those are my babies. Um, so here we go. There is this interesting opportunity to show how God gets into spiritual warfare. I'm not talking, what do they say, fisticuffs. I'm not talking about fists, and I'm not talking about um, um, actual beating somebody up. We're talking about spiritual warfare. The Bible says you fight the good fight of your faith. And I don't want anyone to misunderstand that. I'm not talking about going in and slapping somebody. The Bible says you fight the good fight of your faith. Um, you know, yesterday was our 41st, 41 years wedding anniversary, Richard and me. And in that, do you, do you have everything perfect? No. What do you do when things aren't perfect? I have a perfect plan when things aren't perfect. I go to God. I pray. I pray. Bobby praying against fear. Ronnie praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, salvation. Um, some of these are going really fast and I apologize. Um, Scootian or Scottian praying for healing. Marjorie praying for you. Hadasha. Hi, Hadasha. Praying for you in Jesus' name. Now, oralroberts.com. Go to your, um, go to the internet, oralroberts.com. And when you go to oralroberts.com slash bookstore. Thank you for happy anniversary. Thank you. OralRoberts.com slash 
bookstore. Um, Rhonda, praying for your four-year-old granddaughter. Fever break in Jesus' name. Uh, Jennifer, praying for Barbara, your mother, to be pain-free. Amanda, dizziness and neurological issues to stop in Jesus' name. And that's what we're going to talk about right now, about praying. How do we pray and stand? Kimberly, Lydia, I'm praying for you with your husband in heaven. I'm praying you are absolutely comforted by the divine comforter, the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 6. This is something I really want to show you that has been um, my prayer for many, 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 many years. Now, I want to show you something that I found. It was like a, one of those pictures that um, it's one of those free pictures. And if you look at my notes, now, all not all my notes are up on the internet, oralroberts.com slash bookstore. Those notes are free. You can just have them. They're free. And the reason I gave them to you is I wanted you to be able to put your spin in a sense, your words with it, your Lord, add this to it in my family. Lord, pray for this in my family. And this is what I'm saying. This was the armor. Many people talk about putting on an armor. Now, in the Bible days, sometimes some of the armor, like Goliath's armor, was head to toe. And the weight of it was so um, amazing that people could hardly stand under the weight of the armor. But our armor as a spiritual believer, we have a Bible right to put on the armor of God. And I'm going to do it to you and show you the way we did it to our children. It starts out with girding your body with truth. And it says, then it says, you know, um, it, there's all different, you equip by covering yourself. And then, you know, the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness. I'm going to show you how my children did it. And now they're all grown. And I do it every single day. And I tell my kids, did you put your armor on? They're not kids anymore. I mean, they even put their armor on, you know, because it's something when you train up a child, when they get older, they don't depart from it is the plan. Here's what we did. We put on the helmet of salvation. We made sure it was tied on tight. We put on the breastplate of righteousness salvation, righteousness. We put on the gospel shoes of peace. We took out the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We tied ourselves up with a belt of truth. We take on the helmet. Uh, let's start again. I'm sorry. I got that mixed up. Helmet of salvation. Tie it tight. Breastplate of righteousness. Belt of truth. Gospel shoes of peace. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And then we put on the shield of faith for which we are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And then the last one is praying in the spirit. I pray in tongues. I pray in the spirit. I have my children praying in the spirit. And I believe in that. That's a very important part of my life. If you would like information on that or you want to you be fluent in that, um, call the Abundant Life Prayer Group and ask them to pray for you, 918. In fact, I'm praying for you now for you just to release that presence of the Holy Spirit. But you can always call 918-495-7777, 918-495-7777. And my reason for doing this, my phone just will not be, behave. My reason for doing this is because we can pray in a spiritual language that is a direct line, the Bible says, with the help of the Holy Spirit who intercedes for us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Or I can pray my op opinion prayers, and I pray those all the time. But, <clears throat> pardon me, my opinion prayer is not always perfect. But when I pray in the Spirit, the language of the Spirit, that's a different story. When I was a young girl, um, I took classes in high school and college. I took Spanish French, English, and I actually, because of my family history, I, I spoke to my grandparents in their native language and, and everything different like that. So, so I had a pretty good grasp on a little bit of four languages. But the language that I spoke the most fluently was obviously English. And I think French would be second. And now French is kind of a little bit gone by the wayside, not totally, but a little bit. English, still pretty fluent in it. Sometimes y'all can question me, right? But why? Because I practiced it. Because I, I indulged myself in it. I spent more time in it. I uh, appropriated it. I covered myself by using words in English. Now, having said that, there's a language in the spirit that has nothing to do with our natural learning system. It has everything to do with the kingdom of God. That's praying in the spirit. Paul talked about that in the book of Ephesians. And that's what I want to talk to you about. I want you to go read it, download the notes, help yourself to it. 
But the one thing more than anything else I want you to get is when Ephesians starts out by saying, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We talked about that, Ephesians 3. And Ephesians 4, 5, 6, put on the armor of God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And he put on the armor of God. One of the things that talks about standing strong, if you read enough translations about it, one means don't back down. Stand strong, don't quit, don't give up, don't back down. Stand firm. And I think sometimes when we pray and we don't see immediate results, whether it is standing strong and not giving up in our physical bodies, in our finances, in app applying for a job and praying for our family, in the election, in anything that has to do with politics, when we talk about that, the idea of standing strong is a spiritual act according to the book of Ephesians. And the one thing I want people to understand that the Bible talks very clearly about pray without ceasing. When we put on the armor of God and we pray and we pray without ceasing, I want to show you something about that. Let me grab how oh, my Bible is over there and I'm not going to move because whenever I wiggle, my whole my whole setup of how my camera sits still is it starts to begin to move. But when we pray Ephesians 6 and we put on the armor of God and we say, God, in the name of Jesus, I believe this is how you want us to pray. First of all, he talked about being strong. Then he talked about walking in love. And then, oh, I've got it here. And if you look at my notes, again, oralroberts.com in the bookstore. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I just can't go anywhere past that. Run the race to win. Finish the course. Stand the, stand the test of time, so to speak. It is so easy for me, so many days, time after time after time, to see something that I don't think is happening fast enough and to give up on it. I tend to be one of those people that like to, you know, you all, I've, heard, I've said this a million times. Well, maybe not a million. Maybe a million. A lot of times before, and I've said it, I think, on this feed, um, I like a checklist. I like a to-do list. If you open my desk and you pull out my box and you get my little notebook out of it, in my notebook, I have a, a little box of checklists. So I found this thing online where you can kind of create your own kind of notebook, and then you put in what you want, and then they make it for you. Well, I got mine recently, and it's got a calendar, and it's got... <laughs> calendars about this big the to-do list with all the check boxes is like this and my my husband looked at it and he said Lindsay how can you carry that thing it's it's so heavy I said it's my calendar he said no calendar is that heavy let me see that thing and he began to giggle and I said you want one he said no he said you can't lift this thing he said if you put it in your purse or your briefcase you can't lift I said, well, that's not the point. He said, what is in this that is so heavy? Because the pages were really heavy and it's like thick. <laughs> and he flipped through the calendar and he got to the thing of the pages of the to-do list with little check boxes. And he said, you did this yourself, didn't you? I said, yes. How can you tell? He said, you got about six pages of calendars and you got about a hundred pages. A blank to-do list. <laughs> Me. It's perfect. It's my favorite I've ever had. Why? Because I like to hurry up and check the boxes off. And when I don't get my boxes checked off fast enough, it's very easy for my personality. I don't know my whole personality type, but for whatever it is, my personality wants to check the box off and move on to the next thing. Finish it, check it off, move on to the next thing. If I'm studying something, I'm not the kind of person that goes, well, I've got that done. Let's just rest. No, I check off the box and go on to the next thing. In saying that, Satan is relentless. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He's the father of lies. He's the thief that cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. The Bible talks about the tricks and strategies of Satan. Satan knows his job. Satan started out in heaven, was kicked out of heaven for his rebellion, came to the kicked out, came to the earth as Lucifer, took one third of the angels with them, where they went from their divine, angelic, godly being to one third of a of those angels becoming more of the dark side of the angelic realm, which is the satanic side, Satan, Lucifer. When all that happened, you have to remember that Satan knew the strategies of heaven. Now, I believe, this is me talking, I believe that God has a perfect plan. Satan, the Bible says, cannot create, only God can do that, but he can imitate. 
So what does he do? He's not a lion seeking he may, whom he may devour. The only lion the Bible talks about is the lion of Judah, Jesus Christ. But Satan walks around as a lion, as a roaring lion, as the shadow of a lion. So he imitates through what? Fear, torment, worry, whatever it is you're going through, he puts this imitation on, like putting a costume on. Good looking like evil. Wow, have we seen that. Evil looking like good. Wow, have we seen that in the last several months. But I have to sit back and say, God is not on my timetable. Satan knows the plan and he will do everything to thwart the plan, to pervert the plan, to interfere with the plan, to disrupt the plan, to imitate the plan. But finally, my brethren, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, be strong in the Lord. I don't know if I'll ever get all the way down to 18. You can go read it yourself. But it's hard for me to get past this. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The Bible says, having, having done all to stand, stand therefore. And one, I think it's amplified that says, having done all the crisis demands, Stand, therefore. We can't do somebody else's part. We're not supposed to do God's part, but we're supposed to do our part. And once we've done our part, we're supposed to stand. If you are believing God for healing, don't give up. Stand. If you are believing God for finances, stand. If you are believing God for a miracle, stand. If you are believing God for something in the outcome of politics, stand. If you're believing God in the, well, but you know, when it comes to like my job, this guy said, or the news said, or the media said, listen, this guy, that guy, news guy, no news guy, snooze guy, whatever it is, my Bible is my authority. I cannot put more faith in people who change like the wind. I have to put my faith in the word of God. Finally, my brethren, Paul is making a point. Finally, don't miss this. Last word, here we go. Stay with this. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong. Well, I don't feel strong. Sometimes neither do I. This is a spiritual decision to be strong in the Lord. This is not a spiritual decision to be strong in what newspaper said, to be strong in what your job says, or be strong what your bank account says, or be strong about what uncle whatever says. This is a decision to be strong in what the word of God says. Be strong in the Lord. Jesus was the word clothed in flesh. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to do what? Fall and give up? No. Be strong that you may be able to stand. I have had so many opportunities to quit, fall down, run away, fight, not physically, but, you know, in the good fight of my faith to come against people because people sometimes can be really, really awful. Sometimes even Christians can seem like the devil working through them. I mean, let's be honest. Sometimes some of my biggest battles have been with Christians who have decided to take the side of the devil or take the side of the newspaper or take the side of he said, she said, or take the side of whatever. This says in the Lord and the power of his might, I can't back down from that. And he said, put on the armor of God. Why? So that you can stand. Put on that helmet of salvation. The word salvation is a Greek word, sozo, S-O-Z-O, that means saved and healed. It's the identical same word for salvation as it is for healing, S-O-Z-O. It's a Greek word. Be, look it up, you know, do your search engine thing. Look it up in a concordance, sozo, S-O-Z-O, -O, Greek word, meaning the same word of salvation and healing. Put on the armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the helmet of salvation. The breastplate of what? Righteousness. Righteousness doesn't mean I'm perfect. It doesn't mean self-righteousness. It means right believing, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly believing God and how he operates in his kingdom. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That word translates how he operates in the kingdom. And when you do all the things you have need of shall be added unto you. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. I am not going to try to take down people. If I did, I believe personally, I'd fail every time. My husband is literally about a foot taller than me. Not exactly, but close in that realm. Um, my little granny was probably, she said four foot 10, but I'm not buying it a minute. But I, I, I'm not the tallest person in the universe. And my husband is a very tall person. And, and he and I together, 
never once have decided we're just going to go and fisticuff somebody on the street to prove that we can do it. Why? What does that prove? Because somewhere, somebody is taller or smaller than my husband. Somewhere, most everybody is taller than I am. It, it, it's, not, it's not in my um, wheelhouse. However, what is in my wheelhouse, and I am tall in the power of the Lord when I stand on the word of God. I heard somebody say, you're taller when you stand on this or you stand on that. I'm taller when I stand on the word of God. I do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. That's why it's called spiritual warfare against, here we go, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day, having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, the breastplate of righteousness, shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith. It's by faith, through faith, in faith. We talked about that yesterday and in one of the past programs, Hebrews 11. We don't do this by total intellect, although boy, would I like to have all the intellect in the world. I don't. I would like to have all the foresight to do everything perfectly, but I don't. But he said, we don't wrestle flesh and blood, but powers, principalities, and rulers of darkness and spiritual hosts of wickedness. We're talking spiritual warfare. Therefore, I can do okay in spiritual warfare. In fact, I can do great in spiritual warfare as long as I'm putting on the armor of God, taking on the word of God, believing the word of faith, believing what God said, and standing my ground Sometimes I feel like if I stand any more firm, my knees are going to buckle out from under me. But it's okay. I'm going to stand my ground. Stand there for. And it says, above all, take the shield of faith for which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Fiery darts, in one translation, in one um, commentary I was listening to, said poison-tipped words. Our words are powerful. And if you don't believe it, have somebody just start attacking you with their words and see what begins to happen to your spirit and your soul and then maybe even into your physical body. But you see how God is good. God loves you. God thinks you're amazing. God wants to heal you. Jesus sent his word to heal them and deliver them from destructions. Jesus was the word clothed in flesh. Psalm 103, 1 through 5, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Those things to me can fight battles that I can't fight any other way. Words are so important to me. And it says, spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places, in the high places, you wrestle against spiritual hosts of wickedness. Therefore, put on the armor of God. Stand therefore. And then it says, above all, take on the shield of faith. <laughs> Hebrews 11, by faith, through faith, in faith. I read it yesterday. What more shall I say? By faith, through faith, in faith. Uh, by faith, Abel. By faith, Enoch. By faith, Sarah. By faith, Abraham. And it goes on to, I think, the 31st or 30, 32nd verse of Hebrews 11. It says, what more shall I say? The just shall live by their faith. Take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. I remember in Sunday school, we used to tell our kids, get out your sword. It's the Bible. I'm not talking about a physical sword. I don't even know if I could lift one, but I can lift the word of God and I can pray the word of God and I can speak the word of God and praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit. So I don't say silly things. Be watchful to this end that the presser, preserva <laughs> perseverance, I can say it, and supplication for all the saints. We have mighty weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, which means they're not fleshly, but they are mighty through God. How? To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought. Don't let your thoughts run away with you. Bring your thoughts into captivity. How? Through the word of God. Stand your ground, stand your ground, stand your ground in the word, in the word, in the word. So today, I want to stand my ground with you as you stand your ground. And don't forget oralroberts.com. Download this, my notes, my teachings um, at oralroberts.com. In fact, if you go to oralroberts.com and you go to our school of ministry, our school, uh, uh, go and look up. Uh, the classes journey through the Bible in journey through the Bible. There are classes from Genesis to Revelation, and you can just take the class on the book of Ephesians and study the book of Ephesians. They're, they're uh, on demand. You can start, you can stop. And here's the cool thing. It's free. 
why in the world would you do an entire Bible class? It's like a Bible school online. I mean, it really is like a Bible school online. My father-in-law, Oral Roberts, before he we went on home to be with the Lord, told us, I want you to do an online uh, Bible school. He said I my one of his greatest regrets, which I'm not going to talk about because it makes me cry. He always wanted to do a Bible school. And he said, I want you and Richard to do it. And I looked him right in the face, not knowing it was the last time I was going to see him. And I said, no, I said, that's too much. It's too hard. And he said, no, I gave, and he did. He said, I've given you every bit of my notes, of my tapes, of my material. He gave me file after file after file after file cabinet of all of his entire life and ministry, all of it that were his files. And he said, you'll take good care of them. And I want you to do an online Bible school. And we did. And we were debating and looking at other places and how, how do you do this? How do you do it? Uh, and what do you charge and what's reasonable? And I said, Richard, we can't because I don't want people to have the excuse of saying, I can't do that. I don't have the money for it. And I know a lot of people didn't have the money for it. So guess what? It's free. Go online, oralroberts.com, look at Journey Through the Bible and do the course. It's free. Okay. Now I've said that and now I got my eyeballs a weeping, but I want us to stand when you know the word of God. Take on, above all, the shield of faith, the quench of fiery darts of the wicked one. Take out the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Stand, above all, having done all, stand, stand against the tricks and strategies. This is the wiles of the devil, the tricks and strategies of the devil. Stand against the poison-tipped words that the devil hurls at us. And believe God that in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we can stand our ground. We can stand firm. We can stand strong. We can put on the armor of God. And we can tell the devil when we rebuke the devil, the Bible says he's supposed to flee. But he is relentless, so I'm going to be even more relentless. Okay, Grace, I am praying for you. Addie, I am praying for you. Yes, if you'd like to share this, please do. I wish you would. Kimani, praying for you. Thank you for putting up Ephesians. Brenda, praying for your brother, Rick praying for him to be healed and whole according to the word of God. Jill, praying for you. Thank you for putting that up. Grace, praying for you. Yvonne, praying for you and praying for your son. Hadasha, praying for you in every area. Lauren, praying for you. Angie, praying for you. Jamie, praying for you. Elizabeth, praying for you. Laverne, praying for you. We're standing strong with you. Sarah, praying for you in agreement. Amen. And thank you. Happy anniversary, 41 years for Richard and me. Jackie and Sheila and Renee and Lydia and Angie, this fear has to go in Jesus' name. Billy, thank you. Kimberly, and what's the opposite of fear? Faith. As the faith comes in, it drives that fear out, I believe. Jamie, I am praying for you. Caddy, praying for you. Hello from Maryland. Janny, praying for your left knee for arthritis to go. Janie, Janny, praying for your family to be strong. I do that because some is Janny, some is Janie, and I always forget which one's which. Laverne, Brenda, Janny. Um, Mike, thank you very much. Um, Veronica, Karina, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, praying for your brother Robert, Raylan, praying for cancer to go, praying for your sister Chantel, praying for Mike, praying for Addie, for your daughter Car Karen, praying for you, Erlene, praying for you, John, Lydia, praying for you, healing from grief. I pray for God's joy of the Lord to be your strength. Brenda, praying for you. Margie, praying for you. Barbara, Kimberly, Janie, Janine, Janine, I got that one right. Janine, praying for you. Always send me that. So if I forget, um, I want to do it right. Barbara, Candy, for your husband to walk. Veronica, Janine, I'm going to do it again. Janine, praying for you. Addie, praying for you in the name of Jesus. Janine, I'm praying for you. You're just so precious. Laverne, praying for you in Jesus' name. Uh, Scottian, praying for you in the name of Jesus. Praying for you. I got the floodgates going talking about oral. Victoria, praying for you. Lydia, praying for you. Jody, praying for you in every area of your body. Lydia, Katie, or Caddy, Katie, praying for you. Lauren, Janine, 
Jane for you, Sheila, Kathleen, Teresa, da uh, Dante da uh, for your digestion in your heart, Erlene, uh, where's Richard's armor shirt? Um, I, I wore my own shirt today. He, he's not even home. I could have worn it and he wouldn't have even noticed. Celia, praying for you. Yeah, you know what? He would have noticed somehow. Noah, praying for your grandson, Noah, in Jesus' name. Grady, praying for you in the name of Jesus. We are praying, 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 praying for you. Janine, you are just such a blessing back. Thank you. Veronica, praying for you. Oralroberts.com. Um, Hadasha, for your foot to be totally healed. Kathy, I think it was, praying for you. Jamie, your eyes. MS, praying for you. Martin, Michelle, amen, amen to that. Karina, uh, Hannah, Bobby, uh, what drives out fear? The word of God. Faith, uh, that's what I believe. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Joan, praying for God's comfort. Janelle, Wendy, praying for your lungs. Lydia, Catherine, praying for our nation. Absolutely. Janine, thank you for putting that up. Hadasha, thank you for putting that up. 918 495 Seven seven nine one eight four nine five seven 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 oralroberts.com. Brenda, Janine, thank you for putting that on. Yep, that's a prayer line. That's exactly right. Praying for your husband's lungs to be healed, Denise. Veronica, praying for your daughter's stomach and grandson to be healed. Caddy, praying for a business breakthrough. Yeah, why not? Ministry breakthrough. Josephine, praying for you. Hadasha, thank you for doing that. And I pray God blesses you for that. Erlene, my, if you'll go online, oralroberts.com, find our, our school, find um, the journey through the Bible, find, um, oh, it's uh, again, oralroberts.com or 918-495-7777. Thank you for that. Um, find that. And when you do, I'd love for you to sign up for the classes. Again, I said, as I said, they're free. Download my notes. We just put up our new January, February magazine, Make Your Day Count magazine. You can find the Make Your Day Count program um, on the Victory Network. Go to oralroberts.com. You'll see all the places. You can even download them, I think, right off oralroberts.com. You'll see our Instagram. Go look at the Instagram. My daughter does that. So I pray that you are blessed by it. Um, and, and find uh, Facebook, uh, Roku, uh, what is that one called? Um, YouTube. And I am believing God that we are just going to continue to expand so the word of God gets out and people are blessed. Martin, believing. Yes, believe. Ju Julie or June? Julie, Basha, praying for you. Lydia, Wendy, Amen, amen. Thank you all. Oralroberts.com, 918-495-7777. What is your homework today? Very simply, Ephesians 6. Go get my notes. Study Ephesians 6. If you want to, go online. Um, journey through the Bible. It's free. And get Ephesians 6. And let's believe God for it. Janine, no more spider bites. Amen, amen, and double amen to that one. Sonia, praying for you. Sarah, praying for your business. Hadasha, I am always praying for Hadasha. She's such a blessing on this feed. And I will continue to pray for you all. And hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow at noon. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Bye-bye for now.